Hey guys, it's Adam from Miss Pixel, and today it's my pleasure to bring you my review of the Huion Canvas 24 Plus 1440p fully laminated pen display. Pen display meaning that you draw directly on the display, it's not a separate tablet and screen. Just to give you a little bit about my background, my name is Adam Duff. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm a professional artist and art teacher who's been working in the industry since, well, for over 20 years, so I'm very old and wise. So pay attention to that. And I've worked as a concept artist, illustrator, direct, director, and I've been teaching since 2015 in my online art mentorship called Lucid Pixel. Surprise, surprise. Um, and I've had a chance to review countless drawing devices and, and pen displays and tablets and stands and iPads and you name it. So I've got quite a bit of experience with these. Note that Huion did send this to me for review, but of course I value my credibility more than free products for free stuff. So I'm going to give you my honest opinion. If it's amazing, I'll tell you that it's amazing. And if I think it's a piece of garbage, you'll know that as well. I want to give you a very unbiased, honest opinion so that you make an informed shopping decision. That said, this is the Canvas 24 Plus. If you're interested in a higher resolution 4K monitor, they also have the 24 Pro, which I don't have here, but I recommend checking out Brad Colbo's video. He's kind of the, the grandfather of tech for artists. You can go check him out right over here. There are slight spec differences and stuff like that. And you can choose between the two to find out which one's the best for you, depending on your particular budget and needs. That said, uh, I'm going to be looking over here on the side because I have my notes over here. I know some people get triggered by that, but I don't care because it's a lot of info <laughs> and I don't feel like using a teleprompter. So I will be glancing over here. I'm going to start with the basic all over specs, unboxing, what's in the box and stuff like that. And then I'm going to break it down piece by piece to give you my opinion of all of these different things individually. So 1440p, that qualifies it as QHD or Quad HD, which basically means it's the equivalent of four 1080p, four HD monitors side by side. Uh, it's fully laminated, which is a very big deal for artists because that means that the distance between the tip of the pen and the actual pixels themselves is very, very thin, meaning that you really feel like you're drawing directly on the surface rather than feeling like there's a little bit of a discrepancy between where your pen is and where the cursor is because it can be a little bit off. Uh, so it's fully laminated, which is excellent. It is 23.8 inches across, uh, which qualifies it as a 24 inch display. Uh, and notice that companies will always round up <laughs> when talking about size, but round down when it comes to the price. And the price is marked as $13.99 Canadian dollars or $8.99 American US dollars. So you see they rounded down by, they know when you put it down to $3.99, you're always gonna go, oh, it's $1,300. No, it's $1,400, which is in the market of 24 inch Q, QHD pen displays that are laminated is very, very budget friendly, very competitive price as far as that goes, because my Cintiq, which is a QHD 27 inch display that's many years old with the stand and everything included, that came to well over five grand altogether. And the, and the today's, the pen displays nowadays can very easily range close to 10,000 bucks. So these things can get super expensive. That said, uh, it has a 178 degree viewing angle, uh, apparently, stick a pin in that one, 16.7 million colors, 1200 to one contrast ratio, which does not qualify it as HDR. HDR is generally a minimum of 20,000 to one, but don't let that discrepancy in numbers make you think this is a piece of garbage. It's not at all. This is very common for professional displays. My BenQ, my several thousand dollar BenQ uh, a professional artist monitor has a contrast ratio very similar to this one as well. And it's, you know, it's a very high end display as far as that goes. QLED technology, I'll get to, I'll, I'll give you the details on that a bit. And this is compatible with all devices. So Mac, PC, iOS, Android, Linux, you name it. That said, note that I work on a Mac exclusively and I haven't had a chance to test this out on a PC. And that can be significant because I have reviewed pen displays on my Mac system which worked perfectly right out of the box. And then when I tried it on my old gaming PC, it did, it was not compatible and I ran into a lot of issues there. Uh, so do take that into account if you want to find out what it's like on a PC. Again, I recommend Brad Colbo or anybody else who's, who's 
tested this on a Windows system. So out of the box, you get display, you get the stand that you have to attach. The stand is separate, but it's four screws to, to connect it, meaning that it is VESA compatible, which is fantastic. Uh, you get a pen, drawing pen, with a little cup holder, and inside the cup holder, it comes with nibs inside. You just have to unscrew it. The cup holder allows you to lie it flat or upright, depending on your personal preference. If I can give you a recommendation, do it flat whenever you get the chance, because these top ones, you, they get knocked off your table almost daily. I know mine do. Cabling, USB-C to USB-C, and another cable which is hiding behind here, which I'm going to show you in a bit for, I'm, I'm saving the reveal for dramatic purposes. It also comes with the key dial mini right over here, which is a Bluetooth and or cabled rechargeable keypad. If you prefer to use keypads, it also, which also comes with stickers. If you want to label your different, you want to, your different things, either in color or black and white, a drawing glove. So that's generally what you get in the box. And I might add, if you have cats, the box is an absolute winner because my cat link has been sleeping in and on the box all week since I got it. So the display itself, let's start with the, the, the meat and potatoes. The display itself is, uh, like I said, 1440p uh, resolution, which in my opinion is kind of the optimal, uh, uh, most popular resolution specifically for people, for the average consumer. Uh, and I, I'm not, I don't mean average consumer in comparison to professional. I just mean in terms of people who might not be working on a high end computer and wants the best of the best. A, a, a 1440p monitor is a high enough resolution to be very workable. I find HD is a little bit too low unless you're working on a smaller 12 inch display, but on a 24, 1440p is excellent. It's perfect. Like my, like I said, my Cintiq is that, and I've been working professionally on that for years. It's been my go-to device if I'm not working on my iPad. And um, it doesn't overheat. You don't have fans ramping up all the time to keep it cool because it's trying to push a lot. I find that, that it cuts costs without the cost of performance in a really, really nice way. So I personally am a big fan of QHD. Uh, as far as the colors are concerned, uh, the advantage of a QLED monitor is higher brightness, accurate colors, generally more accurate colors after calibration. Of course, I calibrate my monitors all the time. Uh, no burn-in, so you don't have to worry about burn-in. If you have a display just sitting there and there's a static image, you're not going to come back and see an image burned into the display, which is really, really good. And less expensive. That's one of the things that help allows allows companies like Huion to cut the cost of these because they're not dealing with more expensive panel technology. The cons, which is kind of a contradiction to what they tote on their product page, inferior viewing angles. Although I'm going to get to that in a little bit as far as that goes, but inferior viewing angles, 178 degrees of viewing angle means you can look at it at a very dramatic angle, steep angle, but honestly, who cares because who draws like that? <laughs> you draw looking directly at the display. You always have it right in front of you. And you're going to see, I'm going to show you a demonstration of the side to the front as far as the viewing is concerned. But inferior viewing angles, blacks aren't the best. So I have a direct comparison when I'm actually reviewing this against my Apple Studio display that I have right up here mounted on a VESA mount. And of course, you can definitely see the difference, but we're talking about a difference of thousands of dollars. And this is an actual pen display. That's just a display. Um, so yes, there's definitely a loss in blacks, but as far as color, color differences and stuff like that are concerned, I'll let you know how I feel, feel about that. It generally makes the panel a little bit thicker when it's a QLED, um, which in, in terms of this is really not a big issue because it, it's not thick. It's about an inch in thickness. It's about, it's about exactly an inch thick as far as that goes and um, higher response times, uh, meaning that it's not a gaming monitor. You're not going to get like super millis high to the millisecond type of response times, but it's good enough on this display that you're not going to notice any performance issues. You're not going to get any lag. So I, th I don't think that's an issue whatsoever. The pen. Uh, the pen itself is uh, 8,192 levels of pressure. Companies, I, I even had a company reach out to me recently that said, we our pen has 16,000 levels of pen pressure and wanted me to do a review and an explanation of what that what the significance of that is. 
Honestly, there is no significance of having anything above 5,000 points of pressure from day to day use. Yes, it's more sensitive to the tiny little nuances of your brush stroke, but honest to goodness, it's not something that's felt when you're drawing. Um, really, it's not. So uh, 8,000 8, plus points of pressure is excellent as far as that goes. 60 degrees of tilt, which is good, it's fine. It's not, you can't, you can't side shade like this with 60 degrees, but 60 degrees is a decent angle. I don't use angle that much when I'm drawing. Uh, it's nice, no battery. Okay, so it's not a, a battery. It's like any kind of uh, pen display, like any Wacom or something like that. The, uh, it's, you don't have to recharge it with a battery as far as that goes. Uh, the stand with nibs, which like I said, is, it's fine. It's standard quality. It's got a little bit of a rough texture on top just for grip and also to probably to, un, to unscrew it. And then you can see if we look it up close, you can see the nibs hide inside. Unless you're using soft nibs like rubber or felt tip nibs, there's a, there's a good chance you're never going to change this first one unless you lose it because they don't wear down, normally speaking, unless you have a very heavily textured surface that you're drawing on. Glove included. It doesn't fit my hand. And to be completely honest with you, the gloves that come in these are more of a courtesy than anything. Usually the stitching is pretty garbage. It's I don't use these ones. Yeah. Yep. Yep, I haven't even used it. And look, the stitching's coming undone. <laughs> They're garbage, so whatever. It's a courtesy, thank you for the, I usually just use it to wipe off my surface. There we go, wipe off my surface. I would recommend Smudge Guard. These ones over here. This to me is my personal favorite glove. Yes, I'm promoting a competing company, but it's very high quality. And these, I've had these gloves, I'll use one pair of gloves for years. Uh, they, they don't wear out down and they're really well stitched. Um, and as far as the way the pen feels and the design of it, it's got a nice feel. It's nice and robust in the hand. It's very comparable to a Wacom one. I generally find that these pens tend to feel a little bit lighter in the hand than the Wacom ones. I generally like to have a little bit more weight in my hand, albeit when you get lost in drawing. We're talking about grams here, so it's really, really unsubstantial. The buttons themselves and the build quality feels nice in the hand. It's got a bit of a flattened edge, which is actually, it's, it's aesthetic. It doesn't actually serve a purpose. If it was actually, like if you're thinking about something like an Apple Pencil, the Apple Pencil has a flat, a flat side, which can stop it from rolling off of a table. The only thing that will stop this from rolling off the table are the buttons themselves, but uh, yeah, so this is very, very standard as far as pens goes, and I find it's a perfectly comfortable drawing experience from somebody who's been working on all kinds of devices. Ports and everything like that, uh, for, as far as connectivity is concerned, we have the buttons on the top, we have a bit of a vent on, this, on the top, and then on the side we have a USB 2.0 for connecting any kind of accessories, including the key dial over here or any any other kind of uh, accessories. You have a USB, this, this is actually the one that comes, I believe this is one that's intended for, for the um, USB-C connected uh, key dial. It's got an angled connector to it. This angled connector won't connect in the back port over here. It's not, it doesn't actually fit there. Uh, the USB 2.0 is designed for the one that actually connects to the display itself. And I appreciate the fact that it's angled for aesthetic purposes. It just doesn't leave as much cable clutter, but yeah, I'm going to get to that in a sec. And, um, then comes cabling. Essentially it's a USB-C, one big thick USB-C, and it splits off to power cable and a USB-C and a USB-A for the pen display, for power to the stuff, I guess, and for an actual display HDMI over here. But the big, big irk that I have is on this side, on the opposite side, the USB-C port connects like this. So, so for both aesthetic purposes and for functionality purposes, this is a terrible design decision because it's sticking out the side. And if anybody wants a nice looking display, now you're forced to have all this cabling to look at. And this could have been so easily avoided by just having it connect backwards so all the cables go behind the display so you don't have crap sticking out of the side. And furthermore, if you reach to get something, you break the tip off of this thing, which by the way, Although the cable itself is a nice thicker cable, um, I've already noticed that when, where this HDMI connects to my MacBook over here, and MacBooks have very good solid uh, um, uh, ports, they're not plasticky crap, this thing wiggled, 
this connector over here wiggled and caused some disconnects. So despite the fact that I'm gonna say some pretty nice things about the display itself, this cable can be a real, real problem for this product because it's ugly it's a big wiry heavy mess that you got to deal with it's sticking out of the side and it will break on you you have my word if it doesn't break at the hdmi side it's going to create break at the USB-C side and this is a proprietary cable that's hard to come by maybe you could find a replacement cable on amazon but this is being this is being shipped to you from china so if it breaks and you work on this thing professionally you've got you might have to wait quite some time to get a replacement for it so this this needs to be changed moving forward in my opinion the key dial mini it's bluetooth i've had zero connectivity uh, zero connectivity issues with it it's connected right away it's very quick to charge um, it connects very quickly too which is nice and it's got a lot of functionality to it so you can you have the dial over here for changing brush size zooming in and out depending on what you set it to the button in the middle helps you to change the different modes of what this dial uh, provides you with. It does have a little bit of a haptic click to it. It's not haptics technically. I believe this is a hardware click, um, but it's not loud and annoying. Like I've done reviews of other products in the past where this went crick, crick, which is just annoying. This is a nice gentle click sound to it. So it sounds of quality. The buttons themselves are kind of squishy and plasticky. You can tell that the build quality isn't the greatest, but it's fine. You know, it's perfectly functional. Um, when this is connected to mains power, when you actually have it connected to USB-C to charge it, it, this logo, the Huion logo will glow red. And if you unplug it and it's connected to Bluetooth, it'll be a solid blue. When it's in pairing mode, it'll flash blue. That said, uh, if you can't memorize what all these buttons do, that's where these stickers come in. So you can click, uh, glue these little stickers to them. If you want something that's black and stealthy and goes nicely with your setup, then they've got black ones. Um, and like I mentioned, it connects with an angled, an angled USB-C cable over here, which is great. They should have done that with the display cable as well. <laughs> Just get, you might, I think one way you could mitigate the whole thing sticking out is to get an angled USB-C connector. So you can, you can change the angle of it, but do take into account that, that adapters like that tend to break all the time. I've had adapters fail on me chronically. Adapters are not generally the highest quality things out there. As far as my opinion and my use case of the uh, the keep the Kidel Mini, I don't use these. I don't use them. Um, there's no reason. I have a perfectly good, perfectly functional keyboard that I've been working on for decades. I know every keyboard shortcut. I've got instant access to everything I need. There's no reason for me to relearn to work on one of these. And the other little qualm I have about this is the fact that they're all the same. So despite the fact that I might be able to put stickers on it, when it comes to the flow of working on a pen display or on anything, you don't want to take your eyes off the screen. So I've worked on certain products that I've, that I've reviewed in the past that have, um, that actually where every button has a different feel and, and tactile thing to it. So you can find your way with your fingers. You don't have to take your eyes off to find where the dial or the button is. And I personally think that's the only really good way to implement a key dial type of technology because otherwise every single time i want to click a button i have to find it because they all feel exactly the same way and i have to find it and click on it when i can just use my keyboard that's right in front of me and i have access to the keyboard at the same time so it's a multi-function thing that's sitting right in front of me so personally what would be my recommendation well i'll make a recommendation coming up soon but it's good, it's functional. If you're somebody who's into these kinds of things, great. I personally find they're usually something that just goes right into a drawer and I forget it's there. I forget it exists. Software. The actual software experience, the drivers and the actual software itself, great. I, I connected my thing right away and instantly found the software and it boots up the software. You can customize it. It's nicely laid out. It's not clunky or ugly. It's got a nice aesthetic to it. So you don't feel like it's some cheap software for some cheap product. They actually put some effort into the design and the intuitiveness of the interface. Yeah, and it worked every single time. So excellent, kudos for the software. The fact that I don't have a lot to say about it means that it does its job. It's very functional. Now, the stand. I, when, when I spoke to Huyan, I said, listen, for my particular types of setups for ergonomics, I generally prefer to have it on a stand that I can move. 
like a, a, an ergo, a, like a, a VESA arm, a monitor arm, or some like, you know, like my, my Cintiq, for instance, is this that nice uh, Wacom stand that I can take right off the table. So I asked them if they could send me a VESA arm as well, because they can you can you can purchase a VESA arm to go with it. And this is very compatible with VESAs because it's not too, too heavy. But when I installed the stand itself, the, the functionality and the build quality and the ease of use of the stand was so good that I haven't actually bothered to connect it yet. Besides, if I did connect it, I'd have to take my whole setup apart and I didn't feel like doing that. But I actually found that the functionality of the stand was great. I reviewed the Parblo artist stand for iPads, and it was the only stand I've reviewed to date that had the same mechanics as this stand. This is just a bigger, heavier, more robust version of it. And essentially what it is, is it's a stand that you can adjust to basically any increment. You just pull a button up. So if you, if you're, I'm grabbing onto this display, you just grab your hand out in the middle and you, there's a little knob and you pull it up and you can adjust the stand up and down any way you want it. So, and it, it, it adjusts to very tiny increments. So ergonomically, it's excellent. You can really get it to that perfect viewing angle for you. So you just pull it up and adjust it to all these different settings like this. You can see how many different settings. You can go almost completely vertical. I really, really like this kind of stand technology. I think it's absolutely great. And it's built well. It's got some good weight to it. It's made of, it's really nice and sturdy. It does not feel like cheap plastic crap that's gonna crap on you, so, uh, that's gonna crap out on you. So I'm actually quite uh, happy with the stand. Albeit, if you want VESA, you can stick a VESA arm to it. It's compatible with all VESA mounts. You're good to go. So really good job with the stand as far as that goes. Drawing experience. Excellent. Excellent. I've been, note that I've been working on aged technology. My Cintiq 27 QHD is, it's, it's getting a little long in the tooth, so they say, and it still works great. It still works perfectly. Uh, that's a testament to good cabling and good cable placement and management. This is why that cabling is, I know, could be a very big issue, particularly if you work professionally and you need your device to work all the time. Um, that said, Working on a screen like this compared to working on the Cintiq, as far as color accuracy is concerned, as far as contrast is concerned, the color accuracy is better on this than my $4,000 plus Cintiq, albeit that's a very aged display. So it's expected of an aged display, but I was very, very pleased with the colors. And what I would do is the way I tested the colors was to calibrate it first. And I have my, I was using it as my second display. So I have my Apple Studio display and the Huion Canvas 24 Plus right under it. So I can literally see above and below. And I would draw something in Photoshop and then I would take the image and I would just drag it up and drag it down. So I could compare the contrast, the colors, the yellows, the reds, the oranges, the blues, the greens. And I could just eyeball it going up and down just to see if it seemed reliable. The contrast is not the same as a 5K super gorgeous, shiny, Apple Studio Display, but reliable. No, it doesn't have the same range in the blacks. It doesn't have those rich, deep blacks that an Apple Studio Display has. But honestly, for what you're paying for this thing and compared to my Cintiq 27 QHD, really good. No complaints at all. Reliable colors. I feel perfectly safe working professionally on something like this. Confided, it lasts the test of time. So really, really good. The pen feeling on the display itself is actually really, really nice. I loved the the way the pen resistance feels against the, the, the actual tablet and drawing on it really felt like a nice quality display. It has a little bit of a rubbery feel to that tip, which gives it a little tiny little bit of drag. The way I like it, I don't like surfaces that are too rough because they chew up your nibs and they're useless. They're like It doesn't serve any major purpose for me. Put out a nice drawing glove and try drawing it. You're going to like this experience. I find it really, really nice. The buttons themselves, very responsive. I didn't have any problems with misclicks or anything like that. So really good. I think that in many ways, Huion have have met, have learned to manage where they put their money and where they save a couple of bucks in the right places. So QLED display, good pen, good drawing experience, standard, but high quality, highly functional stand, perfect resolution for drawing, accurate colors. All of these, you're checking all the boxes in the right place because a lot of other features are just perks, but they're not actually things that are going to have a, a, a major impact on the 
on the end production. Minimal bezels. I like the fact that the bezels are smaller. They're about an inch. You can't see it because the display's off, but it's about an, uh, about an inch, uh, which is great on the sides because this can save you a little bit of real estate on your screen. I have a 27 inch Cintiq, but it's got, it's around three, four inch bezels, which some people might like because they like that extra place, but you don't generally draw with your arm hanging off the side of the display. You're usually using the middle of a display. The only area where I feel that the smaller bezels could be a little bit not perfect is the fact that it's also got a small display, uh, a small bezel on the bottom, which does give this a slightly smaller vertical footprint. But I like the idea of there being a little bit more bezel on the bottom. This would be a very good place for you to put some extra tech. The cabling would be a good place to connect it on the bottom. And what that'll do is elevate the display a little bit more off the table, allowing you to not have to bring your hand all the way against the ground if you're drawing low on the page. It just elevates the drawing surface a little bit higher up, which I find would ergonomically be a little bit more comfortable. You don't have to bend your wrist. But like I said, generally speaking, you're not going to be drawing off the bottom of the screen. You're going to be focusing more on the middle of the screen. So it's really not a big deal as far as that goes. So that's kind of the overview of everything here. I'm going to give you the pros, the cons, the meh, and the recommendations. So pros, very affordable, $1,400 Canadian, uh, uh, $900 US for what you're getting. I think this is an excellent price for the quality. Excellent size, 24 inches is the sweet spot for nice big pen display without needing a massive desk to work on. Albeit, it is big, so don't think it's not big. Uh, the display image is reliable, not perfect. I know that the 4K, the Pro version, has slightly better color representation and probably better contrast, but it's good. It's good. It, it does the job. I'm not particularly worried about it. I'm not worried about drawing something that's totally off on this image. Uh, decent colors, good pen and very nice dra drawing experience on the laminated screen. Uh, the lack of bezel is convenient for smaller setups. I'm personally indifferent. I don't really care either way. I'm, I, I'm kind of on the fence. The pen is decent quality, not the best, but good. Definitely better than that cheap crap I've used in the past. The stand is very functional and well-built. I'm very happy with that stand. I like I like this as a cheap functional alternative. I wish more companies did this. VESA compatible, which is excellent. Very steady to draw on because of the good stand and good balance and very good and reliable software experience. No bugs, no issues, confided. I've only tested it on a Mac. You have to do your own homework in that regard. Cons. The glaring con. This is the crappiest implementation of a cable. You have so much going for it. All you have to do is make, put that port on the side and avoid so much aesthetic and functional problems, especially these aren't like super high-end expensive cables. They're decent quality. Not certain about the longevity of the device. That's the thing, right? I've only had a chance to test this out for about a week and a half. I've put maximum a couple of dozen hours on this thing. I've worked on my Cintiq for well nearing a decade and it still works perfectly. So that longevity is something that I recommend checking out long-term reviews to see what people have to say if there's any problems that came up a little bit later on. The key dial is good for what it's worth, but it really lacks that, that, that tactile that every button feels different in a different placement. I can't commit these buttons to muscle memory, so I, I would have to look down at it to be able to use it, which means I'm not going to use it personally. So it's really not something that's good for me. The meh, the things that I'm really indifferent about, the key dial, meh, but it's good. It's there. <laughs> if you need it, you need it. If you don't, you don't. Um, the viewing, viewing angle, that's something I didn't talk about before. 170 degree viewing angle, which they tout on their product page. Who cares? Who cares? If you check out this example right over here of drawing from an angle, yes, if you draw at a slight angle, the image kind of goes to crap. This is a Q QLED screen. QLEDs have crappy viewing angles. But like I said, who draws like that? Who, no, you draw like this. So even if, I wouldn't even, there's no reason for me to even draw 15, 20 degree off the, off to the side. So I don't care. So yeah, 170 degree viewing angle is fine, but who gives, who gives a crap? Recommendations for Huyan. Here's uh, one that I might like, which is cool, is something that I've seen other pen displays do is mount it on the top. It's probably $3 in plastic. 
to build that to build that into the stand. This is very convenient because it keeps it out of the way of being knocked over. These things get knocked over all the time. Like literally, I've had to buy multiple multiple pens for, for my displays in the past because I'd always knock them off my table and I use standing desks so they, they have a long way to fall. But just mount it here or have a side mount. There's nothing on this side. There's no, there's no ports. Just have a little mount like that. That way you always know where to find it and it doesn't get lost. Super convenient just to click it into place. So that's definitely a recommendation that wouldn't cost Huion a lot. Um, sell the key dial separately and put the cost of that towards Thunderbolt. There's something very valuable in 2023, the time of this recording, to having one cable that rules them all, having to do with HDMI, USB-C, USB 2.0, power cable. No, I want one cable connected into a single port in my MacBook, done. Power, connection, everything in one cable. It is so valuable to have that ability. And you could save yourself money on crappy cables and all of these extra little doohickeys that most people don't use. And besides, if you wanna make yourself a little bit of extra money, sell this separately. If people want it, you sell it as an extra accessory. But I would take I would take Thunderbolt off of over this a million times over one. Um, it needs to be tested on a PC. This is my recommendation. So go and check out videos. Brad Colbo, I highly recommend to see how the drivers and everything, the software work with the PC. And like I mentioned before, I encourage you to go and check out long-term product reviews. Check this out after somebody's worked on it for six months to a year. See if anything comes up. Because if this thing breaks down after six months, then it's not worth it. But if it's something that can last, in my opinion, if it could last three or four years without any major issues and you can work on it reliably, anything above three, three plus years, you've gotten your value for the product, in my opinion, because it's expensive as hell, <laughs> right? If you're spending 4,000 bucks on something that breaks down, this is a little bit over $1,000. This is under $1,500 Canadian. It's under $1,000 American. That makes this incredibly good value if it can stand the test of time. In my opinion, if there's anything that's gonna cause malfunction, if anything's gonna break, it's not gonna be the display. It's gonna be that cable. That cable is going to be that, that dandruff that is so massively big that it crushes your head and kills you. But apart from that, I actually kind of love this thing and I'm definitely keeping it, all right? So thank you very much for watching and happy shopping. Take care.